Hey, hey everybody, Brock Frady here, helping you enjoy your ride. In this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at this absolutely gorgeous 2024 Mercedes-Benz G63 AMG. This thing has a base MSRP of $183,000. The one that we're looking at today has a couple of extra doodads on it. And thanks to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina, we're allowed to take an in-depth look at this thing. We're gonna look at the outside, the inside, then we're gonna drive it. And this thing is an absolute glorious monster that I have fallen in love with, like I love this vehicle. And I'll be sure to leave all of Impex Auto Sales contact information, including their website, in the description box below. I've driven these things before, and I love them. I am in love with these vehicles, but there's just something about this one. And it may be the color combination, I don't know, but this 2024 model is dark gray on the outside and it has a gloriously beautiful red interior and I just, I can't get enough. It has these beautiful red brake calipers that we'll take a closer look at in just a second. But this thing feels like a tank. It feels like a luxurious, quiet, whisper quiet, unbelievably powerful and capable tank. In fact, I have nicknamed it the Gorilla. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Let's take a look. Okay, what we have here is a five passenger rocket ship tank with a hand-built four liter V8 bi-turbo engine that produces 577 horsepower and 627 foot-pound of torque. Those numbers are significant because when the torque number is higher than your horsepower number, that's when you feel that real significant pullback in your seat and you get scared and you start to clench things. Yeah, that's what that means. It's got an AMG speed shift 9G Tronic transmission. It'll do zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds. It has miles per gallon of 13 in the city and 16 on the highway. It's all wheel drive, permanent all wheel drive with a two speed transfer case. It's got a wheelbase of 113.8 inches, height 77.4 inches. The width is 86.1 inches. Front and rear track is 65.1 inches. The overall length is 191.9 inches and it has a curb weight of 5,842 pounds. That's a heavy vehicle. But when you've got 577 horsepower under the hood with a hand-built beauty engine, it makes it feel like this thing is so light. Let's take a look under the hood. Listen to this door. And you actually have to kind of slam the door on this thing. The doors are heavy, but, and what's weird is this hood is like light as a feather. Look at that, it just pops right up. There she is. That's the thing that everybody's talking about. 577 horsepower, over six, it's almost got 630 pound foot of torque like I just mentioned. There's your, the guy that built this thing by hand. I'm telling you that the nine speed transmission is a beauty in this thing, whether you're in uh, comfort mode or sport mode or sport plus mode, it's, it's, just, it's just incredible. And it sounds unbelievable. And you know, the G-Wagons all have that side exhaust that is just the coolest and it has such a beautiful low rumble to it, especially at low speeds when it's down gearing downshifting wow i just I, I just don't know what to say it's a thing of beauty twin turbo and there's no turbo lag in any way whatsoever it's almost like the the turbos in them are staggered or something just to make it so that there is no at all turbo lag check out the led circles around those lights we'll take a look at those in just a second but that's a very signature look for the g-wagon your big huge boxy turn signals right up here led on your fenders on the front fenders that great big beautiful mercedes-benz sign emblem right there you have a front camera you have cameras all over this thing uh, and you have a really neat 360 camera view system that we'll take a look at there also amg wheels of course with your gigantic 
AMG brake calipers, beautiful red with your cross-drilled rotors. This thing is sitting on Pirelli Scorpion Zero tires in their 295-40 R22, and they are super sticky. I absolutely love this thing, V8 by Turbo AMG. And you see this big strip down here. I have been told in the past that that strip is the water line. I don't know that that's true because your exhaust <laughs> would be getting it underwater. Anyways, that may be an old wives tale, but that's what I was told at least. And there is no mistaking a G-Wagon when you see it because it looks like a gigantic block of cheese. And I mean that in the best way. It's just a sexy cheese block. Said no one ever. Then back here, you have your G63 emblem. And um, look at that beautiful beefy stance with your wheel wells that stick out right there. Let's take a look in the back. The distinctive handles right here with that big pop button. Here is the back. And it's just a big box. You can see over here on the left and the right side, you have lights that light up and you have a 60-40 split seat with that beautiful red Napa leather interior. Really easy access. It's a low access point right there and a little bit for storage. Then you have a big piece of leather here, carpet, a big huge grip handle. There's another one of these grip handles on the passenger on the inside. That's just really big. And I like how that door opens. It opens just like straight out so you can load and unload things there. The glass in this thing is double paned. And I'll show you that in just a second. Look at that interior, beautiful red Napa leather seats. And they look like they're ventilated, but they're not ventilated in the back. They are heated in the back. They're just, um, they have the holes in them just to match the front, which are ventilated. You have a nice vent right there. You can see that Alcantara lining right there around that vent. Air turbine vents with the rear climate control system. Rubber mats, and this thing is just luxury all over. Here's the thing about it. It looks like it's like really big and roomy. It would be really big and roomy from the outside, but when you get in the inside, the backseat passengers really don't have that much room. Not that much. This one also has the Burbester, I think that's how you pronounce it, audio system. That thing will absolutely thump. Heated outboard rear seats, more of that beautiful red leather. Uh, piano or obsidian black trim that we have seen. That's the obsidian black trim right there. Then you have all kinds of controls for your seats, for your window, for your lock, ventilated seats, heated seats, and I think they're actually air conditioned seats. And then memory seat settings for up to three passengers. You also have a massaging system in these front seats. You have a really neat system that will um, set music in the cabin. It will also control the climate system and the seats will massage you like a hot stone massage. It'll heat the seat up even and it's it's just the absolute pinnacle of luxury. I love the turbine shape of the climate system outputs right there. That's just a beautiful dash there. And I cannot believe how well put together this beautiful machine is. It is just extraordinary. And it just feels so solid. There is nothing loose about, <laughs> about this vehicle. It's just incredible. You know what's weird about this one is it does not have the brush guard on the front. And I thought all AMG six, uh, G63 vehicles had the brush guard on the front. This one does not. Interesting. Obsidian trim right there again you have your sensors and the bumpers that's what's gonna notify you if you get too close to something at lower speeds then you have these little thing outlets there that's gonna squirt your light off in the event that you have mud or debris caked up gosh what an amazing vehicle so about the door if you've ever 
ridden or driven a G-Wagon, you know that there is something about these doors that are like military grade, right? You have to put some elbow into it in order to close the thing. And then there's this just basic, this almost looks like a, like just a super basic, not fancy, you know, handle. I mean, there's nothing in any way special about this at all. There's no touch pad or anything in order to lock or unlock it. You have to come up to it and do it kind of the old fashioned way. But this closing, it, it's, it's kind of weird and it seems kind of like hardcore, but it's actually really nice. Here's something that I'm a little bit baffled by. It's almost a quarter of a million dollars, this thing. And it does not have a touch-free entry system. It does not have wireless charging for your cell phone. And it's a 2024 model. The navigation system is several generations old. I think Mercedes is just trying to say, listen, people, you're gonna be driving this thing just zero to 60 in four and a half seconds anyways, and who cares? Okay, fine, Mercedes, you win. Here's your key fob. Let's take a look at this. On the top is lock, Mercedes emblem here, unlock, panic alarm. So you know what to do. And, and I kind of like how the locks sound. You can probably hear it from here. And then the, the mirrors fold, the lights blink, all that stuff. So now, getting into this beautiful treat of a machine, I love how sophisticated and how sexy that uh, the silver accents are and that obsidian piano black trim there on the steering wheel. Steering wheel has a flat bottom to it. It feels really good in your hands, nice and thick. And then there's your luxurious AMG seats. The wings on this thing are absolutely incredible. The bolsters move left and right to keep, give you incredible lateral support during spirited driving. That feels really weird at first, but man, you get used to it. And it's actually really nice. I super, super enjoy that. The controls over here on the driver's door are pretty much the same as the passenger door, except right here on top. You've got a lot more controls and that's gonna be for your mirrors and your windows. Over here on the left side in front of your knee in the driver's seat, gonna be your lights, parking assist, and things like that. Then there is your parking brake, although it activates the parking brake automatically whenever you put it in park. And then there's your G-Wagon mat with your very cool racing inspired pedals. Dash is all digital, nothing analog about it. And it's just a glorious machine. The, uh, the sunroof is just a basic sunroof and there is tons of headroom. I'm gonna get in the back seat real quick and show you that. Check out the tremendous headroom in this thing. I mean, that's, that's large. That's got a ton of room in the back and that makes a huge difference when you're in a vehicle that's confined a little bit on the left and the right as far as like hip room and elbow room is concerned. But if you've got a ton of headroom, it actually makes a pretty big difference. Also the front glass, and I don't know if it's true for the rear here, but we'll take a look, is double paned and there is an acoustic laminate that runs in between two pieces of glass uh, on the side. So when you're driving this thing, it's whisper quiet, but what is beautiful about it is that you can still hear that beautiful throaty exhaust. So over here on the left side of the steering wheel are some really cool controls that have to do with the display right here. There's a black button that's here, and there's also on the right side another black button. And these are like directional, so you can select and then you can flick and move left and right up and down with that. That's actually your multi-information display up and down. So let me explain. This is a home button, so you're gonna press that, and that will take you to a little display up here, and at that point you can flick left and right. So all I'm doing is putting my thumb on that black dot and flicking. So all the way over to the left is going to be service, drive assist, AMG performance, trip, navigation, radio, media, phone, and designs. Isn't that neat? And then if you want to make a selection into uh, one of those in order to change things around, you can. And that says sport, classic, and progressive. 
and that's actually going to change the layout of your dash, including the display right here on the right. Isn't that fabulous? So I'm going to go down. That's classic. Down again to progressive. How neat. I'm actually going to go up to classic because I like the speedometer, all that being over here on the left side. And then I'm going to go hit the back button right here. And that memorized it or that set it. Click it left, phone, media. And so that's going to show me what I'm listening to, my audio controls and everything. And then I can back out, radio, then navigation over here on the right side is going to be all audio things. So there's my volume all right there. Then I can press the home screen. So now the way this the steering wheel is coordinated is that the controls over here on the left side are going to mainly show up here. The controls over here on the right side of the steering wheel are mainly going to show up on the screen over there on the right. So we're going to fix the camera to mainly display that so we can cover all of this information right here from the steering wheel. So for the right side of the steering wheel, you can see on the top there's a little home button. Then there's that black button, back button right there, voice, uh, this one right here, whenever you press this down, uh, it displays full screen vehicle data right there. And that's the main menu for that. Then here's your volume, and then here is hang up and pick up for your Bluetooth cell phone connection. Okay, so we see all that. So one of the things I wanna focus on is this here, where it says it's the star, and you press that down, and then it says full vehicle data. At that point, you can control this entire screen here or here with their, your mouse by just flicking. And you can see here that whenever I'm gonna flick it to the right, see that? And then you can just press down to make the selection. So we're gonna take an in-depth look at that right now. All right, here we go. Full screen vehicle data. And you can see there on the far left, it says vehicle data. So I'm gonna press down and there we are it's showing me the whole vehicle there's the compass we're pointed north like that uh, we're on a three percent grade and one percent left and right gas pedal you can see that i've just revved the engine and then brake you can see that that's that's just such a neat feature and then right here is going going to be for your camera and then over here is going to be for your differential and so i'm just going to move down press in and there's my dynamic select. So I'm gonna press the star on the steering wheel again. That's vehicle data. Then seat, seat settings, driver's seat. And then I can just scroll down here and go massage. Massage is off, but I can flick left and then I can pick between different types of massages. And you can see high intensity is uh, checked, is selected hot relaxing back hot relaxing shoulder activating classic wave all man it's just all kinds of stuff so i'm going to hit the back arrow again and again and the massage is off right now so that is seats and then i can go back over here to massage then i can specifically select a driver's seat massage passenger seat massage and then energizing comfort menu. This is so neat. Energizing comfort menu. So seat selection. Do I want to do the passenger or the uh, driver? So I'm going to do driver. Oops. Please select at least one seat. There we go. I did that. And now refresh. Some of these are actually going to play music for you. And right now it's a green blue lighting and a cool refreshing breeze whisk you away to the seaside. And so it will actually literally bring up the climate control system. I, just, I went ahead and pressed that. Here comes the climate control system. It's cold. And, and now I think there are like blue and green lights in the cabin. It's daytime so I can barely see. So that's uh, energizing comfort. Then there's vitality. It gives you music and stimulating light enjoyment so this is going to be all kinds of different <laughs> just think i was actually driving down the road a few minutes ago and i had one of these going and i had this hot train a uh, hot stone massage going in my in my driver's seat i'm like holy cow this this is just crazy exercises for relaxing muscles and activating or improving attentiveness and it says training look at that muscle stimulation
And so this is apparently going to show me how to stimulate my muscles and what muscles I need to be working on in order to... <laughs> so I just press the star again because that's enough for energizing. Uh, I'm going to press the climate system down a little bit because it was trying to whisk me away to a cool ocean breeze. Uh, consumption, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's probably not very good because I've been having a lot of fun with this thing uh, here this afternoon. Uh, then I can go color and there are so many different color things that you can do with this thing. You can see over here it says brightness, it's 89%. And so I'm gonna flick left and then I can raise or lower that. I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. I don't want it way too bright, but you can see over here um, what it, it's actually gonna end up looking like. You know, so what, the more I intense it or the, the higher this number is, the higher this light gets here. And then I can pick all these different colors. Let's just go color mix and then brightness zones. And so display do I want it brighter in the rear? Just the way that you can customize this thing. And then I can go here and go welcome. What do I want it to look like when I step into the vehicle? Do I want a color associated with climate? It's just totally incredible. Back arrow, then there's light settings that it, that it came back to. Ambient light, intelligent lighting system, low beams, right side traffic, left side traffic. These are the different ways that I can actually customize my Mercedes Benz uh, under full vehicle data main menu. And that I, I got there by flicking this little toggle where the star is on the right side of the steering wheel. Now I'm gonna press the home button on the controller down here on the little pad. I just pressed home and it says it, it automatically went to vehicle because I think that's where I was last. And now I'm flicking left and right uh, on that pad, but I can also flick left and right on the steering wheel. There's a little black dot on the steering wheel and I'm flicking that right now in case I wanna do it from the wheel. Uh, then there's navigation. In order to operate navigation though, you have to insert a medium with map content to activate navigation. Don't wanna necessarily do that, so let's go back to home. Then there's radio and we'll make sure the volume Volume is down so I just press radio so now here is your radio and I can turn the dial underneath the keypad now and I can go to the preset stations so I'm turning this to the right the dial to the right and those are stations there then I'm on the on top of the pad I'm flicking it to the right and that's where I can discover HD radio stations high definition then there's presets radio source AM FM satellite sound so this is how I can change the equalizer balance fader surround sound sound focus is pretty neat all seats front and rear I like to have all seats I want everybody to have the equal sound experience and then there's options to where I can go track details that's if I'm playing something via my phone or on HD radio or satellite radio it will just display the track details the artist and the song name and everything uh, such as that back to home then there's media, and this is going to have to do with your cell phone. So you can see here, I'm listening to Keep On Loving You by REO Speedwagon. Just an excellent song. And then right down here, you can see that there's the temperature controls. So that's nice that that is a fixed thing right there whenever you're in any of these uh, uh, screens. So I can enter initials, name, or phone number, and I can actually write initials on the keypad that I've been using down here in the center console. I can actually write on that or like... Um, gesture letters on the top of the keypad and it will uh, intuitively understand what letters they are. That's pretty neat. Uh, Mercedes-Benz Connect, then there's Vehicle, and we already have taken a little bit of uh, a look at that right there. Operator's Manual, there's your Owner's Manual right there. Vehicle settings. Whenever you get into this vehicle, you see where it says belt adjustment. Uh, whenever you you click the the seat belt and then you uh, turn the vehicle on, it will actually pull your seat belt just to make sure that it's in a good position. You that's where you can actually deactivate that. I actually like to leave that on though. That's that's a pretty neat feature. And then we have system. And so display and designs. We messed with that a little bit over here on the left side of the steering wheel, but you can go designs. Sport, Classic, and Progressive. That's gonna change the, the look of your dash display right there. 
and then I can go additional display area. What do I want it to show in my additional display area? Uh, brightness, display brightness, display off, day and night design, all super, super intuitive. Input. The other thing about this is that this is not touch screen. See that? There's no nothing happened. You have to control everything from the, your steering wheel or from this control panel that's right here in the middle. It does take some getting used to, but just like anything else, whenever you get into this thing and you, you actually you know mess with it, operate it, try to learn uh, all the little shortcuts and everything, the more time you take with it, the more you will be able to access things and actually use things in this. So that's what I really, really recommend is that you actually use this. So this is actually where you can go in and you can create your own profiles so that it will know uh, who's driving, display all these different settings and things according to who you want it to personalize it for. Okay, everybody, let's take this monster for a drive. absolutely amazing how it does not feel like a vehicle that is this size it is just mind-boggling and I guess it's just a combination of the craftsmanship of everything that Mercedes has done to put this thing together so well and so solid and like the double paned windshield and the double pane side glass that that make it quiet but then you have that throaty exhaust that comes directly under the passenger's uh, rear or, or the, the, the rear doors and, you know, makes it so that you can really hear it. It just like enhances everything and it just makes it feel, plus obviously a 577 horsepower twin turbo V8, uh, that has something to do with it too, but it, it just makes it feel unbelievably light and the steering is crisp. I would actually prefer that the steering would be a little bit more stiff because it's loose. It, it, it feels like a European vehicle, yes, but it, it doesn't feel like a traditional European vehicle in Sport Plus mode that's got the, you know, the chops that this thing has. We're in seventh gear right now. We're going 72. We're in Sport Plus mode and, and it's just beautifully quiet. I'm sure you can hear that exhaust but that's the whole point. So now I am going to take it and I'm gonna change modes right down here on the, uh, on the center console. I'm uh, pushing it up, that was sport, now we're in comfort. The exhaust has been deactivated or the, you know, the, the more accented exhaust sound has been deactivated, although you can still hear it. Um, I can feel that I have to, that, that a little bit more pedal travel on the gas pedal is required in order to uh, keep that speed up. But now it's, you know, it feels um, a, a lot more, you know, just sedate. I can still feel the, the bolsters on the sides of the, the seat keeping me lateral in the seat. That's super nice. I can feel the steering wheel whenever I get over close, too close to the uh, yellow line, uh, kind of vibrating to make sure that I stay in my lane. That's nice that it doesn't beep. I'm sure you can make it to where it can beep, but there's a little green icon down here on the left side of the dash that, that gives me an indication, hey, uh, your lane mitigation is, is active and is on. And um, right now we're, we're just cruising along 73 miles an hour. And it's just as luxurious and, and fantastic as you would imagine. I'm gonna get off at this exit right up here and we're gonna get a chance to uh, open it up once more and also get it on a little bit of a curvy road so that we can see how that works. And I already know, man, this thing sits straight up and down. The suspension system is an absolute beautiful, beautiful thing because it makes a box <laughs> you know that's on four wheels it makes a box sit straight up and down with very little body roll um, and, it, and it's just an, an engineering marvel and that in a normal car if I would have done that in just a regular car, I would be going 35 or 40 right now. I'm going set almost 60. 
and uh, and it's it's just it's just a masterpiece. That sounded like I really accelerated and, and kind of pushed it. I didn't. I wasn't on it like like super tough. It's just the way this thing is, especially since I'm in Sport Plus mode. Oh. The, the, the downshift in this beautiful thing. All right, so now we're going to go over into manual mode and I just, all I did was I hit this button here. And so now I'm in manual shift mode. See that? Watching the tack. See how fast that is? going so that I got it to fifth gear and I can see here on the just under this the miles per hour it's there's a M and it's in yellow just lets me know that I'm uh, I'm manually shifting now I'm in fifth gear and it's holding the gear because I haven't shifted it we're at about 2200 rpm I can go to sixth and now we're at 2000 rpm that's nice so now I'm gonna turn right, gear down, fifth, four, down to second. Some curves coming up here. And again, it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm pushing it harder than I really am, but I'm really not. And the only reason I'm flicking my fingers out like that <laughs> so that you have a visual for when I'm changing the gears, okay? So I, normally I wouldn't do that. I would just, you know, hit it. But uh, so here's a kind of a hairpin. 59 miles per hour. I'm going, I'm in fifth gear. This is slowing it down. It's just amazing to me to think that I'm behind the wheel of a giant SUV. It's it's just sitting straight up the whole time. And again, those those lateral bolsters moving, keeping me straight, that makes a significant difference. Oh, you're beautiful. You're beautiful, Galanda Wagen. I love you so much. It's so easy. And that's because it's got that massive horsepower of 577 horsepower, but 627 pound foot of torque. And like I mentioned in the walk around, anytime you have a significant increase or a significant difference of your horsepower versus your torque, torque 627, horsepower 577, that's when you feel that pull that's when you know you've got something special that is really, really torquey. And, and this is torquey in all the best ways because, I, gosh, I swear, and I know I say it every video when I'm in a kind of a performance vehicle that I wish you were with me because, <laughs> man, it's just that, that I'm just astounded at how easy this is. Okay, everybody, that's going to do it for our look at the 2024 Mercedes-Benz G63 AMG Gorilla, because that's what I nicknamed it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Again, a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this beautiful beast. Be sure to check them out on the worldwide internet machine. But remember, the most important thing of all, have a wonderful day, everybody.